Hello everyone, today I am working on part two of the Bunny Guardian of the Fairy Forest. I have linked part one of this video in the cards up above, so go ahead and click that I if you haven't seen um, the part, part one of this video, and go ahead and check that out. Getting started with the painting, um, I went through and started to paint some key elements. Um, I painted the bunny's ears and some of the I'm sorry, the bunny's eye, rather, and some of the armor details. Um, I kind of put some more masking fluid on here so that some of the elements that I didn't want to have paint on would, um, wouldn't have paint. So, for instance, the halter and um, his tack, the bunny's tack. So I went through and I started laying down color for the bunny. And I started with my lightest colors and um, slowly built up on those colors. When you're working on a two-part piece like this and you've already done so much detail on the back, the difficulty becomes trying to make sure that your central element, which in this case I saved for last, kind of both stood out from the painting and looked like a part of the painting. And that's where you want to keep your, um, you want to keep the palette that you originally used for your other parts. So. You keep that palette so that you can keep mixing those colors and kind of make it so that the colors look the same. So I laid down the lightest color for the bunny and then I went over that and started to add fur details. So at the beginning I kind of added them by mixing a darker color and adding just dotted details to make it look like um, he had texture on his fur and then I'd glaze over that with a very watered down version of that color that I used for the darker um, fur details. Process, you will need a lot of patience. If you have watched um, another one of my videos that I had posted a few weeks back, I talked about reaching the point where you hate your drawing or your painting. And this is where I hated mine, but you need to continue and keep working on it. Even if you're convinced that the final product isn't going to be good at all, you just keep working on the pro um, on your work and um, keep trying to make it look better. So that's what I wound up doing here. <clears throat> Oftentimes I put down the wrong colors or colors I didn't think looked right and I just add glazes of lighter colors over that. And um, just kept working with the colors until everything came out the way I liked it. To really enhance some of the colors for the watercolor, go ahead and slowly build up your colors. So even if they're all rather light, it will gradually become darker because now you're painting over a color. So your first layer will be painted over white because that's the color of your, paint, um, of your paper. And then as you slowly add more and more, it will become darker. But be careful not to overwork because overwork your paper because it will actually form beading. As I worked on this, I realized it was missing some key elements. Um, I had deviated so much from my original design that there was just this empty space. So in that empty space, I sketched in very lightly using a pencil, um, pine cones, because I really like pine cones. And then I, using reference photos, laid down my lightest colors and slowly built them up so that I would have that dark contrast and it really began to make it look like a pine cone. Once again, patience is key when doing this. Um, several times I thought I had ruined my pine cones, but when I added more and more colors and eventually I came back in with colored pencils to really kind of add those final details, it looked more and more like an actual pine cone and less like a random sketch on a piece of paper. The importance of the pine cones in this composition would be to kind of keep the eye and the front of the painting because otherwise there's so much detail behind the bunny warrior that it just looks like um, your, your eye is just drawn to that instead of staying within the front. Once I was satisfied with the level of detail I had with the watercolors, I moved on to color pencils. So for the color pencils, I, I used them to tighten up the background so I made the guard towers look more um, realistic and a little less loose and I tightened up the colors of the trees in the background and this helped to unify the entire drawing. 
As you can see, I'm actually using a paper towel during this process. The paper towel prevents my um, the grease from my hands from smudging any of the colored pencil that I may have already laid down, and it prevents um, any grease buildup, which will mean that the colored pencils won't be able to take to the paper as easily. Also, an important thing to remember when you're working with colored pencil, especially on um, texture paper, is that colored pencil grabs onto the tooth. The tooth of the paper is that texture that you feel when you rub your hand across it, and it sticks to that tooth. So if you burnish or press really hard and destroy that tooth, it's really, really difficult to get a colored pencil on top of that. So you're going to lightly, and very, very lightly rather, um, lay down some of that color, and I, I used several colors to kind of add a nice color depth. And then the last layer I went through um, with a colorless blender, a colorless color pencil blender, or um, sometimes white, and I would burnish or destroy that tooth. And that kind of also made the colors blend nicely and give it a nice soft appearance. Finally, I went through and um, tightened up some of the colors on the bunny and the warrior. And um, this took a lot of patience, so you have to be willing to sit there and just be very patient, and it's really worth the patience that you put into it. The more patient you are with um, putting in the details, the more realistic your picture becomes. When I was putting in detail for the rabbit, um, I used several different colors on the fur, and I used um, a method that one of my favorite YouTube artists uses and I kind of imagined the fur as clumps instead of individual hairs, and it kind of give it, gave it a more realistic look. Finally, I went through and tightened up some of the shadows and um, on the painting and really made it look a little bit more three-dimensional. I want to thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you like this, please thumbs up this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Links to where you can find more of my artwork and follow me on my social media will be in the description box below.